I was recently visiting the Knoxville area and after watching Oppenheimer on the plane out there, I was very interested in going up to Oak Ridge, Tennessee for a visit. Oak Ridge was one of the secret cities that was part of the Manhattan Project. If you're not familiar with U.S. history and haven't seen the award-winning film Oppenheimer, you may not be familiar with the Manhattan Project. This was a top-secret research and development project by the U.S. government that took place during World War II to produce the first atomic bomb. It's considered one of the most significant engineering endeavors of the 20th century. While in Oak Ridge, I visited three fantastic museums to explore this history. Be sure and let me know in the comments which one you find the most interesting. The Manhattan Project National Historical Park is spread over multiple locations in the United States, including one here in New Mexico and Los Alamos that I have yet to visit. These were the three cities that all played a crucial role in the rapid development of the first atomic bomb. The National Park Service established this park in 2015 in cooperation with the U.S. Department of Energy to preserve the key historical resources that were associated with the Manhattan Project. In Oak Ridge, this museum currently resides in the same building as the Oak Ridge Children's Museum. This is where the main facility is. However, there are several historical sites that are designated all over town. So what's interesting about this museum is it's uh, part children's museum, part National Historical Park. Now, when you first come in, if you head to the right, you're gonna see the National Park exhibits, and if you head to the left, you're gonna see the Children's Museum. But as you work your way through the museum, there's a little bit of intermingling of parts, so there's pretty much kids everywhere. Now, I happen to be here when there is a field trip going on, so there's probably more kids than usual, but they have a significant amount of photographs and historical items from Oak Ridge when the city was the secret city. The museum starts by taking you through a visual history of what was going on in the world during World War II and the difficult decisions that the political leaders had to make about whether to enter the war. In 1942, President Roosevelt approved the Manhattan Project and a congressional committee approved its funding. Now, why was it named the Manhattan Project? To accomplish this task, the Army Corps of Engineers established the Manhattan Engineering District, headed by Brigadier General Leslie Groves in Manhattan, New York. The Army Corps of Engineers then began a nationwide search for three rural sites that met their criteria. Oak Ridge was one of the sites chosen. It had a bit of privacy, it was remotely located, situated in a nice valley, and it had adequate electricity and water, as the nearby Norris Dam was completed in 1936. Now the federal government displaced many tribes, farming communities, and homesteaders to acquire these sites, and many people had only 30 days to leave and were minimally compensated for their homes. The museum addresses this issue and tells several stories about the locals that were asked to leave. Thousands of new people then descended upon Oak Ridge and had no idea what their efforts were supporting. The initial plan in 1942 called for housing for 13,000 residents, but by 1945, there were 75,000 residents in this area. The museum has so many photographs and newspaper articles about living conditions in the Oak Ridge area during this time community of Oak Ridge built three massive industrial facilities to enrich uranium. K-25 was the Oak Ridge gaseous diffusion plant. When it was built in 1944, it was the world's largest building, over 5 million square feet, and it employed up to 25,000 workers at its height. There was the X-10 graphite reactor. This was the first atomic reactor that was designed and built for continuous operation. And then there was Y-12, which was the code name for the facility built using electromagnetic isotope separation, producing the enriched uranium. For me, the most fascinating aspect of the Manhattan Project is how the secrecy was maintained during this immense effort. After the war ended, the nuclear facilities were turned over to the Atomic Energy Commission, and on March 19, 1949, government officials opened the gates to Oak Ridge, officially making it an open city. This here is one of my favorite displays. It's a really fun one for the kids who can go up in this makeshift guard tower, and they also show what a typical home was like in the Oak Ridge area during the war effort. Interesting shared use of that facility. It was a little crazy in there with all the kids and the field trips, but they have a lot of great information to check out. And if you do have kids with you, you can send them to the Children's Museum and the adults can check out the Oak Ridge history. It's really fascinating. 
Next, we visit the American Museum of Science and Energy. It's located at 115 East Main Street. Now, this museum focuses on the science behind the Manhattan Project. It explores all the scientific uses of nuclear energy and how these technologies are being used today. I highly recommend that you take a look at this video when you come into the museum because it explains a lot of the incredible science discovery that was done here in Oak Ridge and across the country for the Manhattan Project. And then it gets into the technology that was developed here and what does society do? What does the town, the newly formed town of Oak Ridge do after the war was won and how Oak Ridge has now been morphed into a scientific laboratory uh, for the nation. So there's so much interesting science to learn here at this museum. So let's take a look. Turning the idea into an actual bomb called for a project using untested science, requiring thousands of scientists and citizens, and building an infrastructure on a scale the world had never seen. 59,000 acres along East Tennessee's Clinch River Valley would become a key part of this war fighting machine. This museum basically gives a history of the U.S. nuclear stockpile and all the science that goes behind it, including nuclear submarines, supercomputing, clean energy, and it sounds like there is some fun, hands-on, things to check out back here. Oh my goodness. Look at this play area. for the nuclear submarines was discovered here in Oak Ridge. There's information on Admiral Hyman G. Rickover is considered the father of the nuclear Navy. This is a printed replica 1952 Willys M38 military Jeep. It's a 3D printed replica. The Department of Energy hosts bus tours of some of the historic sites. You can get tickets for these tours from this museum. Bus tours for the 24 season have not yet been scheduled. Links for the museum and the tours will be listed down in the description box of this video. If you want to have this place to yourself, you should arrive right at opening. There's a big group about to come in now. I got here just in time. This is one of the largest construction projects in Tennessee history, the Uranium Processing Facility. and it says it will replace a 70-year-old facility with modern buildings. So this is some of the future of the area that's described here, what's next. So let's see what happens here. Push this button to create a beam of neutrons. Oh my goodness. Shows you what happens in the reactor core. Pull up probe with power. Oh, hello there. Investigate the imaging. You can learn about all the different steps in the process. Now we're going to initiate the neutron beam right here. There it goes, there it goes. this screen to conduct a neutron scattering experiment. Choose one of the two neutron sources. Let's do the high flux isotope reactor. Choose the sample you want to study. Let's look at aerospace. It's being exposed to the neutron beam. Choose a speed. Let's do high. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's collecting data. 
Neutrons interact with atoms in this sample depending on their speed. They go at different angles and velocities and it's recorded by detectors. Let's see what happens. Oh, and they use software developed by ONRNL. O -R -N -L. This is interesting. President Zachary Taylor, the 12th president, they said his physicians listed the cause of death as gastroenteritis, but others believed he had been poisoned by arsenic. And so in the 1990s, some of his descendants exhumed his remains and sent it to the Oak Ridge National Laboratory for testing. They sent samples, samples of hair and fingernail samples, oh my goodness, sent to the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. But, says the human body does contain a small amount of arsenic. And they reviewed the results and it turns out he did not die by arsenic poisoning. Wow. This is actually the real sample on loan from the laboratory in these little containers. Now back by the restrooms, there's a bunch of photographs on the wall. Secret City Revealed. This is pretty cool to check out if you're here. Major General Groves. Now that was played by Matt Damon, I believe, in the movie. Here is a premiere of the northern region of Nigeria at the American Museum of Atomic Energy. This is what life was like in Oak Ridge back in the day. construction of one of the facilities. Now I read a book several years ago. It was like the women of Secret City. I can't remember exactly the title. I'm gonna look it up and put it for you here on the screen. But it did talk about how so many women during the war were used in this production effort and they liked to hire the women because they didn't ask any questions. They would go, they would turn the knobs, they would have great attention to detail and they had no idea what it was they were working on. They got on buses, they went into the hills of Oak Ridge and um, with no idea when they were going to be back, how long they were going to be gone, they were promised good jobs. It was a very fascinating story. Lastly, I stop in at the Oak Ridge History Museum. Now these are all very centrally located. This one is less than one mile from the Science Museum at 102 Robertsville Road. This museum is an incredible gem. It's located in what was the old community center for Oak Ridge back in the 1940s. It's $10 to visit and it is worth every penny. The local volunteers at the museum will orient you to the museum and play a video for you as well as give you an introduction. It starts in this room which was once the dance hall and it has several displays inside here. Now this museum has the most notable display on the African-American experience here in Oak Ridge. During this time, Oak Ridge segregated its African-American workers and did not allow the women to live with the men. They were put in housing called hutments, and they've built an example of these living conditions out back. At this point, I had thought this was the majority of what the museum had to offer, but when I went back into the back rooms of the building, I was absolutely blown away by the quantity and quality of the displays in this facility.
Ed Westcott was the official photographer of the Manhattan Project. His photography is a national treasure. He was from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he was the 29th employee that was hired at the Oak Ridge site for the Manhattan Project. He had a long and distinguished career supporting the U.S. government, and this museum has an enormous amount of his work on display. His son-in-law currently volunteers at this museum. Now I ran out of time to read all these displays in detail. It was time for my trip to come to an end, but let me tell you, I highly recommend visiting this museum and I will be back. Now don't forget to let me know which one of these museums you would like to visit. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing, I really appreciate it. See you next time.